Now, Dr. Eric Feigelding is back with us. He is the Delta and Delta COVID Plus. This brand new, brand new, brand new variant, uh, you know, is here with us. He's an epidemiologist and health economist and adjunct senior fellow at the American Federation of Scientists, FAS.org. His Twitter handle is Dr. Eric, E-R-I-C-D-I-N-G. And uh, if you don't follow him on Twitter, you should get over there and do so. Dr. Feigelding, welcome back. Tell us about this uh, Delta variant and the Delta Plus variant of the Delta variant and what this is going to mean for, uh, you know, uh, largely red counties all over the country. We're seeing this now in Oregon where we've got, uh, you know, uh, the blue county here around Portland is just doing fine, it seems. But some of the, some of the outlying counties, in particularly in the rural areas that went heavily for Trump, uh, their ICUs are starting to fill up fast. Yeah, thank you for having me. The Delta variant is the main worrisome variant, the main uh, variant of concern that the WHO and CDC have declared as very worrisome. And it is twice as transmissible as the previous variant. And it is about uh, two and a half to four times greater hospitalization risk. If you get it, your chance of hosp being hospitalized is two and a half to four times higher than the original strain. And in vaccinations, you really need two doses because with one dose, the efficacy is around 30% or even less. Uh, some people say even less in some studies for one dose. And two dose, you know, AstraZeneca is about 60%, Pfizer is about 83 to 88%. Now that sounds good, but that's much lower than it was before. And the hospitalization efficacy is no longer 100% protection anymore. It's like 94. And you have to just realize that it, this virus is, is so fast spreading. It's not just airborne like a previous one, but all you need is just five to 10 seconds. That's quote unquote, five to 10 seconds of fleeting exposure and you can get it. And this is what we're seeing in Australia. So lots of states and uh, counties in the US are well, well at a very low um, vaccination rate, well below the national average of 45%. Um, and, you know, we're seeing outbreaks even in Israel, which has 60% fully vaccinated, and Israel is still seeing a surge. And so given how low some of the other red states and counties are, uh, it's going to be really, really bad. Yeah, there's a there's a, uh, an article in today's Washington Post where they're talking about this one limo driver uh, airport limo driver in Australia who uh, apparently picked up the, the Delta variant. And then they, uh, it goes on to say, video footage shows the limo driver infecting strangers at a shopping mall and in a cafe through only fleeting contact. This is your five seconds just, you know, breathing the same air. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a professor at the University of Canterbury in New Zealand, or a researcher rather, says after just three chains of transmission, there'd be eight times as many cases on average. So where the original variant may have caused 10 cases, the Delta variant could cause 80 cases in the same mm -hmm. time. Um, it, I, yeah. I, I'm thinking that one of two things is going to happen in the next month or two in the United States. Either there's going to be a great awakening that, that these parts of the country that are just buried in Fox News where they're not hearing the kind of conversation that you and I are having right now. In fact, they're hearing the opposite, um, that either they're going to wake up and they're going to figure out what's going on and maybe even Fox will start covering it, or we're going to see a great dying in this country. A am I exaggerating in, in asserting that? I don't think you're uh, wrong in any way. I, I, there's nothing you said that's going to be um, way off the mark. Uh, in India, for example, where you know, the big uh, epidemic last month, that's the Delta variant. The Indian variant is the Delta variant. And that one caused, on average, we estimate 1.4 million deaths in India. Now, lower range, half a million, upper range, three to four million. But that is a huge number. And uh, basically, you know, uh, if that happened in the U.S. Uh, on that kind of scale, it would be horrid. Now, obviously, vaccinations are higher in the U.S. And uh, back, double vaccinated people are going to be 94% protected, but A, uh, the, there's still 55% of America that's not fully vaccinated, and of the vaccinated, there's still that 6%. So you add that up together, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a stark, stark reality of we're going to see a surge. Yeah. Yes, you can, uh, I think, enjoy a relatively uh, safe uh, existence if you're fully vaccinated, but many people are not. 
And even if they are in red states or in counties, there are many immunocompromised people. There's children that are not vaccinated, uh, and children do suffer COVID and long COVID, even if they don't die. And one in 100, by the way, one in 100 kids with Delta variant are hospitalized. It's a 1% hospitalization rate for children with Delta variant, according to the UK data. And uh, I don't know if anyone really wants to play the Russian roulette with one in a hundred chance of getting a kid hospitalized. Um, I don't know, I wouldn't. Yeah. And that is just the serious word. There's lots of uh, adults that are immunocompromised uh, from either taking certain medications or have cancer, certain cancers or other immune illnesses, and of course, children, and also in elderly, the, uh, the efficacy wanes over time. So I don't expect it to be 94% protection against hospitalization, even if you're fully vaccinated um, among the elderly, because in elderly, it wanes much, much faster than in young adults. Yeah, there was a piece the Associated Press was running yesterday afternoon where they were quoting uh, a fellow who's the CEO of a hospital chain in Missouri, and he was pointing out that they, they've got a county with a 15% vaccination rate, and uh, he's just freaking out. I mean, he was literally tweeting Fox News saying, please cover this. And uh, the CEO of a hospital chain. Uh, this, this is serious stuff. You mentioned two vaccines versus one vaccine. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a one-shot uh, vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, does, is that included in that uh, kind of equation? If somebody's had the J&J &J vaccine, should they be talking to their physician about also getting the Pfizer two-shot? You hit the uh, nail right uh, on the tip. Uh, the problem is that we don't know about the Johnson Johnson. Johnson Johnson is by definition a one-shot vaccine. It's not authorized as a two-shot vaccine. But we know that it's problematic. Um, one shot AstraZeneca, not good. One shot of Pfizer, not good. Again, only in the 30% range. So that's a huge, huge drop. By the way, uh, over the old strains, one shot used to give you like 70%, which is decent. Uh, but one shot with just in the 30s, it, it's, it's really low. Now, five, Johnson Johnson, we just don't know the exact amount. I think you know it will likely protect you from hospitalization, Mostly, but previously, remember, Johnson Johnson uh, severe disease hospitalization protection was more like 90% after a month and a half. Um, so it was never you know, 100%. So we have to be really careful. A lot of people, the number one most question, asked question right now uh, that I get is, what do I do if I have J&J? &J? And I think the I don't have an answer, but a lot of people have uh, changed from AstraZeneca to Pfizer. Lots of European countries advised it. Canada now advised anyone who got the first shot of AstraZeneca switched to Pfizer or Moderna. Um, I can't give you official uh, advice, but I'm mm -hmm. just saying many other countries are doing that. And um, and we just don't know yet about one shot changing. Yeah, and, and we don't know if there is... Uh, <laughs> Is a is uh, if there are any side effects or consequences that would be negative to somebody who's already had the J and J shot, say a month or three ago, and then says you know goes to their doc or or back to the county health department or whatever and says I would like to either get a second J and J shot or start the the two shot routine for Pfizer or Moderna, whatever's available. Uh, do we know anything about that? Well, um, this uh, mixing of vaccines. There's trials going on. Uh, there's a second J and J booster trial also finishing as well, but uh, the the number one thing I've mostly heard is that the most common thing it seems to be people switching from in other countries AstraZeneca to a Pfizer or a Moderna. Right, but these are unvaccinated people. You know, yeah, yeah. I well, get no, it. among the first dose uh, AstraZeneca people, they're switching to the mRNA. Oh, so for the um, second shot. Presumably, show. yeah, for the second shot. Now, for J, this is what I'm saying because the analogous. Uh, situation here is should J&J &J get a second J&J? &J? That's not technically approved. But technically, if you go to a pharmacy, um, they will give you a different vaccine if you waited more than six weeks. I know that's the official rule. Mm -hmm. and, um, and and they can't really stop you. So and there's, uh, and there's And there's no known side effects to getting a second shot if it's more than six weeks out. Is that correct? Well, no, it's just that they, they, we don't have the data. This is why I'm saying this is right. not official medical advice. Right, I'm no, I get it. Well, I get it, you're uh, not, you're not advising. Are doing, we're speculating here. But, you know, we're speculating, but I'm speculating based on other countries' data. Because right. Canada, as the federal government has officially declared, everyone who got first shot AstraZeneca but hasn't gotten second shot, please switch to mRNA. 
That's what uh, Canada is now advising. Oh, and uh, many European countries are advised the same thing. So given that precedent, I'm going with given that precedent, it seems like the precedent is switched to M mRNA when in doubt. Right, right. Um, any, any, uh, we're going to hit a break here, Dr. Feigelding. Uh, we're talking with Dr. Eric Feigelding. Uh, adjunct Senior Fellow at the American Federation of Scientists and Epidemiologists and Health Economists, Dr. E-R-I-C-D-I-N-G at Twitter uh, and FAS.org on the web. Uh, any, anything you want to add to that as, you know, before we hit this break, uh, Dr. Feigelding? We have about 30 seconds. I think people definitely need uh, to double vaccinate. The window uh, for the U.S., it climbed from 10 percent to 30 percent um, uh, Delta variant in less than a week, uh, two weeks. The window until it really surges is about one month, whenever it will dominate. And so, everyone, this is your last chance, last window to get fully vaccinated before the Delta variant becomes dominant. So please go out. Coming, coming to a town near you.